Austria is a small world in which the big one holds its dress rehearsals. This is something that the playwright and poet Friedrich Hebel noted already in the 18th century. Not since Kurt Waldheim was elected president in 1986 has an Austrian election received so much attention all over the world as when the country was to elect its president on the 22nd of May this year. Why this interest for a small central European country? Well, obviously it was all about the possibility that Norbert Hofer, the candidate of the Freedom Party, could become the first right-wing populist head of state in a Western European democracy in a long, long time. And as opposed to 16 years ago, when the Freedom Party entered the Austrian government back in the year 2000, this time it will not be enough to just point the finger at what one thinks is an intrinsically right-wing and extremist nation that has not been able to deal with its unflattering past. No, this time Austria is Europe, or at least what Europe is about to become. However, just as interesting as the populist politics of memory on the surface is the underlying theme in this play which is now being rehearsed in the Alpine Republic namely the crisis of the established and traditionally dominant parties. In the first round of the Austrian presidential elections, the Social Democratic and Christian Democratic candidates received only around 20% of the vote. Together. That it was the former Green Party leader Alexander van der Bellen that in the end won the election, which was later annulled and will be repeated in December, that it was van der Bellen who received most votes doesn't change this at all. On the contrary, if he will be able to repeat his victory in December, or if Norbert Hofer wins, it will anyway be the first time in modern history that Austria will have a president who is neither a social democrat nor a Christian democrat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is a political earthquake in a country that has been characterized by so-called big coalitions and a large degree of common agreement across party lines. Today, Austria is a deeply divided country, just as Great Britain before and after the Brexit vote. Regardless of what you choose as the basis for your comparison, women versus men, blue collar versus white, white collar, urban city or rural countryside, everywhere opens up a chasm deeper and broader than the Zillertal in the Tyrolean Alps. If it would only have been the women who voted, then Alexander van der Bellen would have won a line, landslide victory. We, we are the new center, said Heinz Christian Strache, leader of the Freedom Party, after the elections on the 22nd of May. This must be interpreted as a battle cry ahead of the Austrian parliamentary elections 2018, when Strache wants to become the new chancellor. But is there still such a thing as a political center? This is the question the traditional centrist parties have to try to answer. And not only in Austria. If what we've seen in Austria on the 22nd of May was a European dress rehearsal, then it's certainly too early to write the final reviews. Next year we'll see the presidential elections in France and Marine Le Pen is bound to be ready for the premiere.